So if you've seen the last two episodes that I did covering this topic, I did not expect to be covering this topic so much back to back to back. But it's been so much going on with this topic. Just new things dropping, new things dropping, new things dropping. Um, first off, I want to start off by saying I thought I was going to be better. <laughs> I'm not. All right. I'm still sick as I was in the last video. I don't know what the heck is going on. Um, we got tested, so it's not the C word. You know what I'm saying? We straight. But, um, but yeah, I wanted to address this because Maul and Rory came out and they actually talked about what was going on behind the scene. And I had some notes, but I think it's better if I just fire off the hip. Um, so I don't be sitting here reading to you guys the whole time. A lot of stuff that I was saying actually did come out uh, to be true. Um, don't believe me? Look on YouTube. Uh, well, actually, first off, you can go to Venmo and you can support Rory Mall. I think Mall has it in his bio on Twitter. Um, at least that's what I was told. I saw the link in like a thread and somebody said he added it to his Twitter, but it's like $2 to watch it. If you don't have the $2 to watch it, it is on YouTube. I know a bunch of people bootlegged it, but it's like an hour and nine minutes long. I watched the whole thing from front to back. I watched it twice um, just to make sure. I wanted to be really, really clear before I came up here and said, yo, you know, they, they exposed Joe. Cause I, I know that's going something along those lines going in the, in the title. I'm sorry. I, I gotta, I gotta get the click. You know what I'm saying? But Let's get to it. So Rory and Maul didn't hold no punches. All right. They were up front. They talked about stuff. And I wish that they would have been this up front when it came to speaking about this in front of Joe. And I feel like even when they spoke to Joe in front of the audience on the podcast, they were still trying to, in a way, protect Joe. Because it's like, it's no point in him making him look bad if we're coming back to the podcast. That hurts the podcast. Um, so I could see them doing that because I can't, I can't complain about them doing it. Because Joe did the exact same thing. So since the last episode I made, Joe had came back and was like just attacking Rory and Maul. Um, actually, no, that was what the last video was on him attacking them. So since then, with this whole situation, here's a few things I want to address because a lot of you guys in my mentions, um, I got a few mentions on Twitter actually. I was very surprised, but then I, I it was mostly in the comments though on my uh, on my YouTube. Um, people were talking about Rory and Maul, their workers, their workers. How dare they try to see the books? That got debunked immediately off the rip that was the theme of this whole podcast that they were on and, and first off let me start by saying the podcast looked phenomenal the setup was dope the lighting was amazing it looks a lot better than what i got going on right now i just just threw this on i ain't set up nothing i'm exhausted we're gonna get back right we're gonna get back right next week but um <clears throat> they were talking about how the reason why they wanted to see the accounting it wasn't because they were being dirty manipulative trying to get more money trying to get a bigger check trying to renegotiate trying to break their contract like a lot of you guys were saying in my in the comments they are partners like i insinuated like i believe i may have said it but like i believe they weren't coming from the mindset of an employee i didn't take it as them being employees i just never took it that way the way that they operated the way that joe talked when joe was talking crazy to them in that podcast when they came back and said i don't owe you for nothing i don't owe my friends respect and all that stuff joe never once said like look y'all work for me i own this y'all get out of here now he, he said everything around it like yo this don't stop this my life's working all that but he never once called them an employee and i felt like that was important because if i'm the boss and stuff is getting super out of hand and I'm telling my friends, I don't owe them respect. <clears throat> the, hey, if I'm the boss, I'm going to tell you I'm not the boss. They cleared that up for everybody. So to, to the academics, the, the, the brilliant idiots, and this, this is not a shot to brilliant idiots because I actually enjoy the uh, brilliant idiots. But to the other people, the fans, everybody that's saying that they're his workers, that's not true. They were partners. They had a percent. Their contract is based on a percentage. So they debunked all that, that employee crap. Hey. Our contract says we get a percentage. The reason why we was asking to see the books because that's how our contract operates. In order for us to get paid a percentage, we'd have to know what's being made at the lump sum. So to the people that was making the examples of, yo, LeBron, Maul used this example in the podcast. Yo, LeBron doesn't ask the Lakers what they make. And that's because LeBron gets paid a salary. He doesn't get a pay a percentage of the Lakers revenue. If he needed a percentage of the Lakers revenue, then guess what? He would be asking what the books say, how much money, what's the ticket sales looking like, stuff like that. So they go on, they talk about a lot of things. Um, it was it was crazy seeing how people were painting Rory out to be this dirty dude and Maul was just running behind him. Um, Rory did some nice things behind the podcast and it kind of made me look at the rest of those guys on the podcast a little bit funny because a lot of guys knew what Rory did for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rory uh, spoke on like, it was, it was a time where he said, yo, don't pay me this month or next month. The guys are, you know, looking, looking um, um, overworked. 
and, and frustrated. And Maul was like, nah, don't BS it. They said they were overworked and frustrated. So Rory said he gave up two of his checks, two nice checks after the Spotify deal to the team as bonuses. Joe called him screaming at him on the phone and cursed him out, talking about he was ungrateful and all this stuff. But they're painting Rory out to be this terrible dude. And that's why they say there's always three sides to a story. Now, what Maul and Rory are saying is, <clears throat> hey, this is the truth. We're not going to sugarcoat it. This is the truth. Now, I know our story. This is the truth. I'm still going to believe that there's three three parts to a story. I'm still going to believe that. Do they side of the story make a lot more sense than, to, than Joe's? Yes. Joe's side never made sense, which is why when I was making videos about it, everybody's coming like, oh, you just a Maul fan. Oh, you just a Rory fan. fan. You immediately just like, yo, you look at when you look at Joe's side of the story, it just never made sense. It didn't add up. Like, like when he when he brought up when he brought up uh Maul hiding detergent, and Maul spoke on this too. When he brought up Maul hold uh hiding detergent in the room and living with him, it just didn't sound right. It, it didn't sound right. Like you telling me that this dude was living with you. And you couldn't even trust this dude. And this dude was like buying and hiding detergent. First of all, that was stupid. That was something stupid to look at. Like, I wouldn't even thought twice. If my guy bought some detergent, kept his detergent in the room, I just wouldn't trip about it. Like, I don't care. Like, if in my mind, I think you're living with me, you're struggling financially, I'm not going to take part to the little things you do bring in this house because I want you to use what you got and then build up so you can't get your own. Like, it, I don't I don't understand. I just don't look at it like how Joe was looking at it. So, Ma was like, first off, that was that was straight up BS. All right, let's let's not pretend like we ain't never broke bread together. We'd have been through it all together. <coughs> Excuse me. He was like, yo, he was like, I didn't set up set up events for you. Had you do, do like little walkthroughs. I'd have been there for you when you were out doing shows, performing. I was there, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ma pretty much told his side. You could tell that what Joe said really hurt Ma the way that Joe was talking about Ma like he was a bum. Ma was like, hey, I've done stuff. I've been hustling, making money since you met me. Like, you've never taken care of me. Don't pretend like I was just some bum living on your couch. You know what I'm saying? So that narrative that people create, he like, yo, that's not true. Um, he was like, I always had your back. I always did for you. Um, he actually spoke on the time. I don't know if you guys remember Consequence and, and Joe. I think this was on Love and Hip Hop. I vaguely remember this because this is a while ago. And I feel like this was Consequence that did this. But was, when Joe's on Love and Hip Hop, it was like one of the reunion shows. Consequence had a, a, a opportunity and he ran up behind Joe and Joe wasn't looking. He hit Joe in the back of the head and everybody had to be separated. Joe called Maul and was like, yo, y'all got to get up here. Y'all got to do something. Get the guys. I, I love that. Get the guys, bro. Get the guys. Um, and, and, and Maul said his boy was the one who popped off on Consequence off the strength for Joe. So this is what kills me about people, right? When this information comes out, that it, it's so much more to it. I don't want to be here. If I tell you everything that happened in this, it's going to be 30. I'm going to be here for 30 minutes to an hour. And I, I just don't want to do that, especially how I'm feeling right now. I'm already late on the story. I should have been here. Like, I should have dropped this video for y'all like 15 hours ago. And I'm just sitting down to record it. But, um, yeah, it was so much that was addressed in it. And Joe made them seem like such terrible people. And Parks was sitting there co-signing and ad-libbing. And I had so many fans from them in the, in the comments talking about, yo, they're employees. They don't have the right to negotiate. They don't have this. They don't have that. And it's like, yo, I would ask people, I say, yo, do y'all have their contract? Do y'all have their contract? Like, yes, I had a strong opinion on them, but I felt like Joe had overstepped things morally. People were dead, like dead seriously in my comments talking about their contracts if you knew their contract. And that didn't make any sense to me. It, it didn't make any sense to me because like, yo, y'all don't know this contract, but y'all constantly run with the, the, the narrative like, yo, the academics was giving y'all. Like I saw, I saw, I didn't see the, okay, I didn't see the live. I saw snippets of the live on Twitter. <clears throat> And I seen like a snippet on YouTube of academics going crazy on Rory and Maul and like giving this narrative that they were bums and they was workers and they this and they that and all that stuff. And it's like, bro, like all, all jokes aside, that's that's cute and all that he does that for entertainment. He swears up and down like, you know, he's on a neck and stuff like that, even though he would never do that in, in real life. He's creating a narrative. Joe is creating a narrative. And it's like I stand strong by my point of it's hard to be a fan of Joe Budden because Joe Budden is always messing up. He's always messing up. Then, before I get out of here, I want to speak on this too. <clears throat> before any of y'all come in the comments saying that, yo, they're lying, or Joe, or, or you know, Joe could be, he could have another side, and you know, they love. Joe has himself admitted that he was wrong. He admitted that nothing they said in their podcast was lying, that it, it wasn't the truth. He went live and said that what they were saying was the truth. And he said that he should apologize to Rory for what he did. He said, he said, I should apologize to Rory. <clears throat> I need to apologize to Rory and maybe Maul. He said, and maybe Maul. But for sure, I need to I need to apologize to Rory because what I did was wrong. 
Then he came on, a, 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 what did he say? Like the fans were just lighting him up on his Instagram live or whatever. And he came out and was like, I'm getting off. I don't feel the love no more. He got, he got off. He let them bully him off the internet and stuff like that because Joe can see that he was wrong. Then I also want to add this too. <clears throat> I almost forgot about this. Kevin Hart spoke on this too. And when I first seen I said, damn, <clears throat> why is Kevin Hart speaking on the Joe Budden podcast like this? And I thought about it. If you've been watching the Joe Budden podcast, you know when the Joe when when Kevin Hart got caught cheating, Joe had the, all the jokes in the world. When when Kevin Hart got in that car accident, Joe claimed it was a rollout for him to get from under that situation with uh, him cheating on his wife, which is crazy to me. The man got into a car accident. I'm not gonna do that. That's crazy to me. Um, but but Joe said that, and it was just wild to me. It it, it didn't make sense. Um, but Kevin Hart pretty much you know took this perfect opportunity to throw shots that way. And all I will say is this. Joe is crazy. We, we all know this. We've all seen this for years. Joe is crazy. We've seen it as fans. Like, Joe is always going to be the dude that talks crazy to you. When you hear some of the stuff, just listen to Rory and Maul's response, please. When you hear some of the stuff he said, it's like, oh, it's just not a surprise. Seeing how Joe talked to people, it's just crazy. I couldn't imagine myself being a friend of Joe. And Joe needs to understand that, like, yo, the people around you that deal with you truly love you, bro. Because, like, I got people that I love. Like, yo. I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. My little brother, uh, uh, the next in line, he reminds me so much of Joe Budden. Like, this dude can can be super sweet at times, and then he can turn around and be the most evil person you've ever met in your life. And I don't have the patience that Rory and Maul have. I don't mess with my brother right now. Like, I don't mess with him. I'm, I'm, I don't deal with him because I just don't need that energy. Some people can deal with that energy and go, okay, that's just who you are, and I can love you through that. But I'm just one of those people, I just can't deal with that type of energy. It's too much. And Joe needs to understand everybody's not going to be able to deal with deal with that energy. You need to value those around you that love you. Like when they was breaking it down, bro, what Joe was messing up and playing them on the accounting and the books for years. And they were trying to get it right. And re Damn, I, I hit the button. I hit the button on accident. But recently, it just boiled, it boiled up and got out of hand between them. But they've been supporting this dude for years and showing him love. You gotta, you can't, you can't take those people for granted, bro. You can't take those people for granted, bro. And and <clears throat> I hope that people that created that narrative, I hope y'all come out and be like, yo, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. Just, just be grown about it. I still see people talking about, hey, just because they get a percentage, don't mean they need to see the books. And it's just like, you, you can't convince those people. Those, those people, they just gonna ride with Joe. They will ride with Joe off the damn side of the earth if, if, if there was if, if the earth was flat they would ride with joe off the side of the damn earth off a cliff if they could you can't worry about those people but for the people that got some type of sense hey, it's okay to say you know what i thought I, I i thought i knew i was talking about and i was wrong i was wrong rory and maul wasn't trying to play joe joe was wilding out um the people that's around joe you know they they just fake man y'all y'all call rory and maul the the tail kissers Man, go go look at Savon the Don's uh, uh, um, podcast, bro. When I first watched it before Rory and Maul responded, I said, damn, this is a good podcast. And then when you go back and look at it, it's like, damn, it was so much gaslighting that Rory and Maul shed a light on that all of them dudes over there is fake, bro. All of them dudes over there is fake. It's crazy. But if you made it to this video, thank you for your time. Like, comment, subscribe. I promise you. Yo, when when I get better, I'm telling you, go back to some of my old videos. All right, I've been I've been getting like worse and trash over like these last two three videos because I don't know, I'm just not getting better. I'm starting to look worse. I ain't even cut my hair. I ain't lined up. I, I just threw on an old hoodie. Um, but yeah, look at my other con look at my other videos, bro. I promise the content coming back. But you made it to this video. Thank you for your time. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out, chief.